Now it's time for linear inequalities in one variable. Whenever you're solving inequalities, I know we talked about this already in a previ previous video, but the only thing that's different is if you multiply or divide by a negative, you need to remember to flip your inequality symbol. So you're still going to solve these just like they were equations. So in this first problem, what we need to do is distribute and get rid of the parentheses. So we'll have 6 minus 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to negative 4 plus x. Okay, so we distributed the negative 3 and we distributed the negative 1. Now we're going to collect our like terms that are already on the same side. 6 plus 6 will give us 12. I want to go ahead and move all of my variables to the left hand side, so I'll subtract x from both sides. x minus x is 0. That'll give me 12, negative 3x, and negative x is negative 4x. And bring down the negative 4. And now I need to move this 12, so I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. 12 minus 12 is 0. I get negative 4x is less than or equal to negative 4 minus 12 is negative 16. To get rid of this negative 4, I divide both sides by negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, so I get x. Now I divide it by a negative, which means I have to flip the sign over. x is greater than or equal to negative 16 divided by negative 4 is a positive 4. Don't forget that you can graph these, you can write them in interval notation, and you can also write them in set notation. So make sure you read the instructions to know which way you need to leave your answers. Okay, how about B? On B, we need to get rid of these fractions. So what I think I want to do is multiply by the least common denominator, which will be 4. So when I multiply the first fraction times 4, 2 will go into 4 2 times. So I have 2 times all of this. So I have 2 times 5 times a minus 3. And then I multiply 4 times this one, and 4 will go into 4 1 time. So I just have 7a. Now 2 times 5 is 10. I need to distribute my 10. That will give me 10a minus 30 is less than 7a. Um, I need to do a couple of things. I think what I'll do first is add 30 to both sides. But since I'm running out of room, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 7a from both sides. We'll do all of that in one step. So negative 30 plus 30 is 0, and 7a minus 7a is 0. 10a minus 7a is 3a. Bring down the inequality, and this is a positive 30. Now I need to solve for a, so I divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I find that a is less than 10. Notice this time I did not divide by a negative, so I do not flip the inequality symbol. Now these are called compound inequalities because if you notice, you have two sets of inequality signs. Well, in a case like this, instead of doing the same thing to one side to, as you do to the other side, you have to do it to all three sides. So let's go ahead and get rid of this 5 by multiplying everything in here by 5. 80 times 5 will be 400. When we do all of this middle section times 5, 5 will go into 5 once. So you just get all of that stuff in the numerator. Since those are all like terms, I think I'll go ahead and add them. 63 plus 79 plus 91 plus 84 is 317 plus x. And then is less than 90 times 5 is 450. Okay, I need to get this x by itself, so I need to get rid of this 317. So I subtract 317 
from all three sides. 317, excuse me, minus 317 is 0. So 400 minus 317 will give us 83. Keep your x. And then 450 minus 317 would give us 133. Okay, you have just solved a compound inequality. Just as a review, if you are going to write this in interval notation, it would start at 83, it would stop at 133, it would include the 83, but it would not include the 133. I don't know if you know what's going on with this problem, but it looks like maybe they're trying to calculate what would I need to make on my fifth test if I want to have an average of between 80 and 90. That's what that means. So this person would need to make at least an 83 and at most 133 to make a B, in other words. So between an 80 and a 90. It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, look at the other one. We need to get this x by itself, so let's go ahead and subtract 5 from all three sides. 5 minus 5 is 0. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. Bring down all this other stuff. And 11 minus 5 is 6. I need to get rid of this negative 3, so I divide by negative 3. But whatever I do in the middle, I have to do on the other two sides. Keep in mind, we divide it by a negative. That means we have to flip all of these signs. So, negative 9 divided by negative 3 is 3. Negative 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. Now, when you have a, a compound inequality, you want to write it so that all the signs are less than. So we're going to take this whole thing and just flip it over. Negative 2 is less than x is less than, oh, I left out an equal 2 in here, didn't I? There we go. So negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 3. So if you were to write this in interval notation, it would start at negative 2 and go to 3, including the negative 2, but not including the 3. Okay, now we're going to have some absolute value inequalities. That's a tad bit different. Do you remember whenever we had absolute value equations, we had to set up our two different situations? Well, the same thing has to happen when you have absolute value inequalities. There's a teensy bit different though. I'm going to show you what's going on. The very first thing that you need to do is make sure you have the absolute value by itself. That means we need to get rid of this 3. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. That would give me 0 right there. So absolute value of 6y minus 1 is less than or equal to 5. Now you set up your two different situations. Go ahead and write it exactly like it is. 6y minus 1 is less than or equal to 5. Then we have to choose whether we're going to use an and or an or. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The other case is 6y minus 1. You flip the inequality and you make the right side negative. So you flip this over and you make this side negative. Now you're going to solve each one of these inequalities and keep this and or or with it. Now, if this is a less than, if your absolute value is less than, that is going to be an and. There are many different ways to remember that, but that's the most basic and I'll just leave it at that for now. If you have a less than, you're going to use an and, but you have to make sure your absolute value is on the left. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. We'll add 1 to both sides. We'll have 6y is less than or equal to 6. Then we'll divide by 6 so that y is less than or equal to 1. Okay, solve the other one. Add 1 to both sides. 
6y is greater than or equal to a negative 4. Divide by 6. So y is greater than or equal to a negative 2 thirds. We have an and here, which means the two should be able to go together into one group. It looks like we have negative 2 thirds is less than or equal to y. If you turn that around as a less than, and we also have y is less than or equal to 1. So you can write it this way. Negative 2 thirds is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. So if you have an and problem, you should be able to write it together as one inequality like this, a compound inequality. Looks like I'm not going to have much room on this page. Okay, look at B. We need to set up our two situations because we already have this absolute value by itself. So we're going to have 3 minus 4x is greater than 7. This time we have a greater than, so we're going to use an or. 3 minus 4x is less than, flip the sign over, make the right side negative. Okay, go ahead and solve this by subtracting 3 from both sides. Negative 4x is greater than 4. Divide by negative 4. Flip the sign over because you divide it by a negative, so x is less than negative 1 or something. Let's see what this side gives us. Subtract 3 from both sides. Negative 4x is less than negative 10. Divide by a negative 4. So x is less than a positive 5 halves. Okay, this time we have an or situation. Have a look at what that looks like on a number line. 5 halves is the same as 2 and a half, and then negative 1 is over here somewhere. It says x is less than negative 1. That's like this. x is less than 5 halves. Whoops. Sorry about that. I made a mistake. This is a negative. We divide it by a negative, so we have to flip the sign over. Sorry about that, guys. So flip the sign over. x is greater than 5 halves. We'll go this way. Normally, if you have an or situation, I'm not saying all the time because all the time is not true, but normally your graph will be pointing in opposite directions. So you could just leave it like this, but if you put it in interval notation, it would look like this, negative infinity to negative 1, and then you would have a union 5 halves to infinity. So that would be the way to write it as an interval. Okay, very quickly, let's just have a look at C. On C, it says the absolute value of something is less than or equal to negative 11. Is it possible for the absolute value of anything to be negative, first of all? It can't be negative, right? So how can it be less than a negative? It's not possible. This is going to be 0 or positive, and this says it's going to be less than some negative number. So this can never happen. So the answer to C will actually be the empty set.